will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversary. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. I want you to see, I've had people tell me, you know, why would you move the church into that region with all of that madness and all that mess? And, 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 and why would you go over, you know, and, 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 and put all those resources in those areas? And, and they, they even talk about, I'm not going to name, but they talk about adversaries and, and enemies, but they don't understand. We're not moving into the region because we chose to we're moving into the reason because we obeyed God he, he told us to do this and see here's what happens when you're obeying the voice of the Lord my adversaries become his adversaries my enemies become his enemies and my battle becomes his battle the battle is not mine it's the Lord's as long as I'm obeying the voice of the Lord if God be for me he is more than the whole world against me who can stand against us if God God is for us. We have to have a mindset that no matter who raises up, they're not greater than God. No matter who opens their mouth, they're not bigger than God. No matter who comes at us, they're not greater. Hey, I'm trying to teach you a mind to occupy. The church has been too passive. We've not been aggressive enough. We don't understand taking it by force. We ain't asking nobody for nothing. We ain't begging nobody. We're going in and claiming everything the Lord has for us. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Every ground, every business, every soul, everything the Lord has for us, we are not going to apologize. We're going to claim. Can I teach? Oh, it is serious business, Jeff. And look, the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, the gang members, need to understand we're coming to claim. The pimps need to understand we're coming to claim. <laughs> See, I need, to, I need some soldiers. See, I'm not feeling, I need my 11 o'clock crowd. I'm not feeling enough soldiers in this atmosphere. I was riding with a young man yesterday, and I saw, I saw a young lady walking down the street that was a prostitute. And, 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 and I pointed out to him, I said, that's a prostitute. But when he looked at it, he didn't realize. I said, no, you got to understand the hood and where you are. You have to know when, when a woman is not just walking down. You don't just walk down the street in an atmosphere dressed like that. that that's inviting something. That's a prostitute. And, and see, here it is. She wants love, but she wants the wrong kind of love. But see, when we get over in the region, and armed with the right kind of love. The pimp that has lied to her, he doesn't understand we've got a love that covers a multitude of sins and you can't keep her, baby, because she belongs to Jesus and everything that belongs to Jesus must come home. And the angel of the Lord has put a perimeter around three diamond lanes. You can't roll up on those grounds any kind of way. Because once she gets the three diamond lane. Oh, isn't it coincidence? It's more than coincidence that the property is, is, is number three diamond lane. One for the father and one for the And another for the Holy Spirit says, I will cause your enemies to turn their back on you. I ain't crying because nobody turned their back on me. I'm going to cry out to the Lord and say, thank you for exposing all of my enemies. Thank you for showing me who is with me and who is not. Thank you, Lord. And see, what happens when you're not depending on flesh, it don't matter who turns your back on you anyway. I mean, that's what happens. We fall out and lose our minds because people we thought were going to be there for us turn their back on you. All they did was do you a favor because they just got one less person to distract you, one less person to keep you off focus. That's just one more, <laughs> one more conversation I can have with the Lord. Can I teach? He says not only that, that he will cause... He will send hornets before you, which shall drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites from before you. What that means is there are some who are going to panic about what we're doing. See, the hornets created panic among the enemies, the Canaanites and the Hivites. And so what, what happened was the panic caused them to drive away from the, uh, 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 from the Israelites. And, and let me help you with anybody who's panicking about us going over there is not of God. Let me, let me. 
Anybody who is panicking about our church moving from Garnish, you've had people who talk to you at work and on a job. Why are your church moving over there? Why are you? If they're panicking, they're not of God. Anybody who is panicking about the house of God going to win more souls is not of the kingdom. Why would God send his people to panic his people? We're not going over there to be an enemy to God's people. We're going to work with God's people. We're another unit that's coming over there to join in unison with anybody, black, white, Hispanic. We are another team coming to work with them. But if you're panicking, that tells me you're not of God. No one church, no any church. There's not enough churches over there to win those souls. They need help. You mean help is coming and you panicking? I heard foolishness about churches, smaller churches who, who were there panicking because of our, our perception of being large and they're afraid that the members are going to leave. If you're rooted in what the Lord called you to do, I don't care if T.D. Jakes moved across the street, right? I ain't panicking. He could post up in the parking lot. I'm going to keep preaching just like the Sunday before and the Sunday before that. Thank God for the help and keep preaching. I'm not panicking because you know you're in God's will. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Anything that's panicking is not in God's will. Let me just go a little bit farther. I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to help you because as you engage people, all kind of silly things will be said and all this and you have a spirit of panic. This was the thing that struck me the most and I've got so much to cover in a short span of time. He says this. I like this in verse 29. And Shep, I thought about you. He says, I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. Verse 30, little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. I feel like I need to teach right here. He's saying that don't don't get it twisted. Y'all not going to move in in this month and the next month. You're going to just tear everything down. It's not going to happen like that in one year. Because if, if, if I tore everything down in one year, you don't have enough forces to occupy. So what I'm going to do is give you victory little by little. You're going to take region by region. And as you take regions, I'm going to add people to you. And as I add people to you, I'm going to, you know, hear what I'm saying. I'm going to give you more regions. And so I won't give you the reason until I've increased you, until I've given you enough people to occupy a region. 